everybody. Um, so we're getting ready here to take apart the hot end. Uh, my hot end is working just fine, but there seems to be a, quite a few people who have um, gotten a jam uh, or perhaps some other issue, and uh, or you're just curious um, exactly how the hot end um, goes together, comes apart, and looks like. So the only thing that I've done up to this point that I did off camera was that I removed the fan shroud and um, I actually have a little connector in place because I have two different fan shrouds that I use. One is the uh, the high flow 40 millimeter fan shroud for PLA and PETG and other materials that use cooling. And then the other one is the original size fan without any nozzle. There's a, a shroud up a Thingiverse that I put up for a, a no nozzle design and that helps ABS print uh, quite nicely. So take that off. Um, if you don't have a connector in place, you can just flip the fan over the uh, the top of the gantry here uh, to get it out of the way. And then you're going to want to heat your hot end up to at least 200 degrees, 210, but you are going to want to remove the filament first. You don't want a whole bunch of filament in the hot end all gummy and uh, ready to make a mess. So you're going to want to um, retract uh, or remove whatever you've got in there to start with, and then you'll be ready to go. So for starters here, we're going to take a large adjustable wrench and we're just going to hold the heater block stationary. Uh, we don't want that to spin on us. Um, you're not going to have to grip it too hard, but just enough to keep it stationary. And then you're going to take a um, either a wrench of the appropriate size or even just a flat uh, pliers. Grab the nozzle and rotate and it comes loose with pretty much no drama. So now once it's loose, we can begin spinning it down. And be careful, it's going to be very hot. So watch those fingers or anything that can melt. All right, next up we are going to remove the actual heat block and throat. Um, and just be very cautious as you do this because it's still going to be at temperature unless you turn it off and let it cool completely down um, and be very mindful of your bundle of heater wires and your thermistor especially this is the stock thermistor it's going to be a bit fragile and what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to clip this bundle so we've got a nice nice amount of play so we don't have to worry about breaking anything Okay, so I am unscrewing my heat break, or throat as it's sometimes called, and um, again, it's, everything is still warm. Um, I, I still, I'm still letting the heater block stay at 200 degrees, and um, it's, in, it's in good condition. Um, it is a very common design. Um, there's really nothing about this design that's cheap, despite the printer being cheap. Um, this, is, this is just super common, very, um, very common to see this used in any type of direct drive kind of mark 8 style extruder and the mark 8 style extruder is is the style that has the the spring-loaded lever up against a a uh, grooved wheel and this type of block whether it be a, a, a solid aluminum block with an additional fan and heat sink attached to that or in the case of this printer where it's just the heat sink block and the throat um, locks right into it with the grub screw um, is just prolific. So I wouldn't say that Malian um, cut any corners or did anything weird on this one. This is pretty much par for the course and they're used everywhere. So um, there's nothing wrong with this design. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with this design. Aside from the fact that because it does have that PTF liner, if you get a really bad jam um, or you really crank the temps, you can start to deform that and then that can become a problem. But when used within its operating range and with proper slicer settings that, that don't cause jams and proper cooling, um, this hot end will probably last uh, a very long time. So here is the original nozzle. Here is a compatible nozzle with identical thread length. This is off Amazon, sold as a, uh, I believe, a, a MakerBot replicator replacement nozzle or a Mark 8 replacement nozzle. Here is a 
E3D style hot end, uh, nozzle rather. And I'm actually going to be swapping this in because I want to go to a 0.3 millimeter nozzle for additional um, precision. And um, it's got the same thread, but it's obviously got about uh, two to three more turns of thread than our stock nozzle. Um, for those wondering about the nozzle shape, the fact that this nozzle is a little bit taller um, means that you're going to have a little bit of a longer melt zone. It means you might have a little more oozing, but it means you could probably print a little bit faster and not have uh, temperature drops. For this printer, it's not a big deal. The nozzle geometry is really not that important um, at the speeds that this printer typically prints at. Okay, so what I've done here, again with the nozzle still at 200 degrees, is I've tightened this E3D style nozzle all the way up to the heat block. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna loosen it um, just, just about that much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our original heat break, and by the way, if we wanted to, we could take an all metal heat break like this, with no PTFE liner in it, and we could use this, and it would work just fine, and um, provided you could cool it well enough, we could actually use um, this all metal hot end to allow us to print much more exotic materials that require a higher temperature. Now, the only caution I would have with that is one, if you're using the stock power supply, um, it may not be able to keep up with those high temperatures. You might have to upgrade the power supply. And two, the heated bed may not be hot enough for some of those more exotic materials. Like with this all metal hot end, we could probably print polycarbonate. However, to not uh, have pretty significant warping, we probably need a heated bed that could get to at least 100 degrees. So um, if you're, if you're going to be swapping this out because of a really bad jam um, or something of that nature, I would probably stick with a PTFE lined hot end. But if you want to experiment, play around, there's nothing stopping you from putting one of these guys in. Just be aware that if you do use one of these, you will absolutely need to season it with oil in order to prevent PLA jams. Okay, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start screwing this guy back in. And what's going to happen is that he's no longer going to seat in quite as far into the hot end because more of the threads are taken up by the E3D style nozzle. And that's not a problem. We just need to make sure that it's tight so that these two surfaces are very tight against each other so we don't get plastic squirting out of the heater block and making a big mess. Alright, so I'm going to grab this guy, like so. I'm going to tighten this guy down. And then I'm going to loosen him slightly and then I'm going to tighten the nozzle back and we're nice and tight. So we've got some threads sticking out, but that doesn't matter. Um, we just need it to be tight up against the, the nozzle. And um, for those of you curious about what this is, this is just some fiberglass wrapped in captain tape that helps insulate the hot end, um, helps stabilize the temperature, and prevents the power supply from needing to use um, more power to keep the hot end at temperature because it just keeps, keeps it a little bit warmer uh, insulates it a little bit. Okay, so at this point we are ready to slide it back into our um, into our, our heat sink here and I'm going to be doing one other modification while I do this and that is I'm going to be converting this to use flexible filament and all we really need to do for that is two things. The first being we need to fill this open air length with a piece of, of, of PTFD tubing that's the same diameter as our Bowden tube. Um, and then we're going to implement another little piece up on the up on the feed end up here because um, there's a little gap there as well. I'm going to go ahead and figure out the correct length of this, and then I'm going to trim it, and then I'm going to put a bevel on this side, which is going to match up with the the little dome or or, or fillet in the top of our heat break. Okay, we're ready to go here, and I've just just to show. Uh, what you can do um, if you've got your hot end all the way apart and you realize you want to do a flexible mod but you don't have another printer to print um, the little plastic adapter that I'll be linking or the little plastic sleeve to center your, your PTFE tube um, you can actually just take some of that blue tape you probably have sitting next to you um, cut about a, a quarter inch strip um, a few inches long wrap it around so you get about a six millimeter slug like so and then slide the sky into the bottom of the heat sink Follow it up with your hot end. Um, square this guy off so it's parallel with the front there. 
uh, push on it, make sure it feels nice and snug, and then what we're going to do is we're going to slide our, our grub screw in here, get ready to tighten that down, and while we're tightening it down, we're going to be pushing up on the hot end to keep pressure on the tube, our, uh, our flexible material uh, tube. Alright, so I've got my grub screw and nut. I'm going to press up on my hot end, pushing my hot end into the PTF tube, pushing that PTF tube into the bottom of our Bowden tube adapter, and then as I apply that pressure, I will tighten this guy up so that my heat break is now making good thermal contact with our heat sink and is nice and squared off. Um, do be very careful. If this is your stock thermistor, be very careful around the thermistor. They soldered the thermistor wires to the extension cable, which is not the right way to do it, unfortunately. The right way to do it is to use a little crimping uh, ferrule, and I think I've got one around here somewhere. That looks like this. It's just a little, basically, aluminum uh, ferrule with a little flare on one end. And um, if you have this apart and you're feeling super adventuresome, um, what you could do is take your thermistor off, you could pull down the heat shrink tubing, and um, you could break the solder connection because it's going to be really brittle because the material that the thermistor wires are made of does not actually like solder. It doesn't wet solder very well. You could slide one of these guys over it, crimp it on there with a needle nose pliers, and uh, then put new heat shrink over it, and that would probably future-proof you against thermistor failures. But if it's working and uh, you don't feel like it, don't mess with success, but do be very careful when you're working with this during this procedure because if you put too much weight on it, um, chances are very likely that you will pull the thermistor, one or both of the thermistor wires, out from underneath that heat shrink tubing. Alright, so before we go any further, um, I would highly recommend that you feed some filament through. And you might see the shadow of it right there at the top of my Bowden tube, and make sure you can feel it feeding smoothly all the way down through until you get um, to the, the top of your uh, of your heat break nozzle. If it's a used nozzle, um, there may be a little bit of filament in there that keeps it going all the way down to the tip. If everything's brand new or you just cleaned it out very well, you should feel it go all the way from here where you can last see it. And you should be able to feed in that length of filament until you get all the way down to here. So make sure that um, you can do that before going any further because nothing's worse than getting ready to print and realizing that you assembled something wrong or you didn't flare the top of your PTFE tube well enough to accept filament. Um, and once you're done with that, uh, we're basically ready to start putting this guy back together and doing our first test. Okay, we are all back together here. Um, I decided to shorten my support tube a little bit and actually move my, my hot end up um, to make it closer to the original height. Um, actually, I think I might have bought myself a few more millimeters of Z height. We'll find out when I do the bed level. Um, but the transition zone um, is in basically the same place. The throat itself, the top, it's actually moved up because we ended up backing it out of the hot end block a little bit to make room for the slightly longer nozzle, but that is neither here nor there. Um, the thermal characteristics are going to be nearly identical. If anything, it might actually keep the transition zone a little bit cooler, which would not be bad. Um, that would be that would be okay. So next up, we're just going to put our fan back on, and then we'll do a, a test. Uh, make sure it's extruding smoothly, um, and then it'll be time to, to print some. All right, so we're all heated up here, and um, you can see that we've got filament coming through like nobody's business. If you're wondering why the filament thread looks so thin, um, you'll remember that I just swapped out my 0.4 millimeter nozzle for a 0.3, so we're 25% uh, smaller diameter.